The mangroves of Changtui are well known to Chuang Huang Enguian. This reptile specialist has been researching in the field for 10 years. He is studying the Rangbong, one of the rare species of snake perfectly adapted to this environment of mud and salty water. This aquatic snake feeds mainly on small fish. The species of reptiles and amphibians of the mangroves have been little studied because the habitat is hostile and difficult to access. The rambong was only observed in the Red River Delta in 2014. Yo, I've got one. It was Trong Quang who first observed them here at Chan Thuy. Twenty-three millimeters, more or less, and here we see its breathing holes turned to the sky so as to better breathe on the surface. Breathing orifices placed on the top of the head are one of the crucial adaptations of the snake to the flooded environment of the mangroves. This is the typical ranbong habitat. At low tide, it hides in holes, and at high tide, comes up to the surface to breathe. In this environment, the Rambong has the ideal camouflage. If its brown color isn't enough to allow it to pass unseen, in case of danger, it buries itself in the mud. The ease with which it buries itself is precious to it in the typhoon season. When there is very disturbed weather, when a typhoon approaches, the snakes feel it in advance. In this situation, the snakes take shelter. They take refuge in holes before tempests arrive. Another of the crucial adaptations of the Ranbong is its capacity to withstand a saline environment. It can actually excrete the surplus intake of toxic salt. A further cold-blooded species, the crab frog, has also adapted to the salt-laden water of the mangroves. While the ranbong can be observed in the day, the crab frog only comes out at night. That's a crab frog. It's the emblem of the mangroves. It can excrete excess salt thanks to a filtering system in its kidneys. The Chantui Reserve is the most southern region of Asia where the Ranbong live. Although they are now protected, the snakes of the mangroves were long hunted since, in Vietnam, the reptiles had an important place in traditional medicine and culinary culture. Cobras, which lived in the least flooded parts of the mangroves, were decimated and are now on the list of endangered species. Hunting is now banned, 
and the restaurants which cook snakes have to raise the reptiles themselves. The little town of Lemat has made snake into a culinary specialty. Madame Chia runs one of the most prized establishments of the town. Her employees must master techniques for handling snakes. Have you chosen? We'll have cobra and ginger soup, then nems. Eating snake is good for your health. It helps you to regain vitality, and it helps also to treat some illnesses, such as rheumatism and backaches. Snake is very good, and various dishes can be made with it. That's why it's been a traditional dish for over a thousand years. This local culinary custom comes from an ancient legend which says that Limat was born under the sign of the snake. It is told that in the 11th century, King Li was sailing with his daughter upon the Chuduk River. Suddenly, a gigantic snake rose from the water and dragged the princess down into the depths. Only one young villager had the courage to dive into the river to fight the monster. Since then, the young hero is honored by enjoying eating snake. This age-old tradition means that snakes are family animals for the villagers. In their natural state, snakes are gentle and you must be calm with them. When holding them in your hands, if you're peaceful, treat them gently and they won't be aggressive. It's only sudden movements that make the snake attack. Nowadays, eating snake is an exception, and more folklore than cooking. 